Uh, we are entering the final frame of this blowout match here. It's already Edmonton Totems 58, Tennessee Moonshiners 86, a 28-point lead. Uh, uh, if, if, if Edmonton is able to even make this anywhere close, it would be amazing. Uh, really, this is... Uh, I'm completely startled by this one. I, I Does this have anything to do with uh, uh, the roster change, the rotation they made? Because, I mean, they are just not playing... This is nowhere near their Game 1 performance. You know, I, I actually don't think it is uh, to do with the rotation change. I think it's due to their organization and not studying the Moonshiners playbook. Because, yeah, we have seen some surprises, but I'm seeing just absolutely textbook plays from the Moonshiners here. And the Totems doesn't look like they're prepared for that. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Moonshiners just playing absolutely. They they are in control of the momentum. They're in control of the pace. Um, they are making the. They are setting up the shots they want. Random from three, back of the iron, no good on that one. And we're going the other way. Recovered by Kazanishi. She's bringing it up herself. Pass over to Tyson in the corner, but the defense is right there. Tyson then pass back to Kazanishi from three. No good. Back of the iron. Griffith Sputin, the big bear, able to make that rebound. Hands off to Random. We go back. We're Sputin six points. Great performance from the Moonshiners bench in this match. Everybody pull, uh, pulling their weight. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, some teams are really starter heavy, but the bench power teams go much, much further than people think. First uh, bucket attempt was no good. Griffith Sputin with the rebound puts up a second shot, and that was no good as well, but he drew a foul on Clyde Murky. That'll put the bear up the line for two. Wallace Butler is back on the floor. You know, where a lot of this seems to have changed is when Wallace Butler um, did that high athletic flying dunk. Yeah, that was that was the, hey, this is our turf, get out. <laughs> yeah, something, something happened there. I mean, first off, you know, if you ever see penguins fly, you know something's wrong, and we saw a penguin fly today. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and he's probably going to get an entire bucket of mackerel for that. Oh, I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be scared to look at my Twitter feed after this game. It's just going to be him all like mackerel, mackerel, mackerel. I... Okay, I you wonder... know what? He's going to be interviewed after this game. I, I, I have to, I, I'm very excited to see what that post-game press conference is going to be like. I wonder if he's typing on his iPhone every word tries to autocorrect to mackerel. <laughs> Rasputin's only able to make one of the two, splits his free throws, and makes his Edmonton 60, Tennessee 87. Power can pass inside, Murky back to the basket. Now, I'd make a bet about um, whether this, you know, who's going to win, but that's kind of pointless at this point. Uh, I guess the yeah. big question is, um, uh, will Tennessee be able to get a 30-point lead at some point in this game? You know, I actually don't think so, and I, I don't think they should try for it either because they just need to keep up the defense. Although, you know, now I say that, yeah. they, they're about you know, three points away, so who knows, they might. Griffiths Butin there. Uh, I, uh, these are not the shots that the Big Bear should be making. Good grief, the Big Bear out of Russia. I mean, a solid player, sure, and, but but big, heavy, and he just did a fadeaway from the elbow. Uh, I was like, no, that's not what you, he should be doing. Holly Barker not able to connect with the 22-footer going the other way. Now we're starting to see the Moonshiners give it up a little bit. Kazanishi hits a three ball. Beautiful job there with a quick bucket right off the pass. There's, there's the kind of openings that the Tatums need, but they, they need uh, let's see here, um, what, 10 more of those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they definitely need a few more of that one, but excellent job there by the Saluki out of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Barker, Deep Woods. Hands over to Stores. The, the, the raccoon has been shooting well. Rasputin, another turnaround fade. This time no good, but Eve Pasias is there, and she gets the bucket. Eve Pasias is just opening up this game. That one just bounced, rolled right around the rim. Almost looked like it was going to pop out, but then fell right in. Now we've got Jared Froler back out on the court here, but I'm not seeing Rocky. And at this point in the game, it kind of makes me think the Totem's given up. If he's not on the floor, that yeah, you're absolutely right. Rocky Caracol not playing. They 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 they're all they're doing is they're preserving their MVP. Look, we got uh, you know we got a, we're bringing this series back to Edmonton for the next three games. Let's just make sure that we got our guys healthy and we're able to play at the game at our pace. Butler handoff from 22, no good that time. <laughs> 
And a missed rebound from Kazanishi allows Holly Barker to scoop in and fetch the ball. <laughs> One dog okay. missed it. That was like like jumping for a frisbee there, and she just totally whiffs it. And Holly Barker is right there to pick it up. Oh. And now the moonshine is just clearly wasting time. Yeah. Absolutely just, ah, ah, come get me. Well, oh. Holly Barker tried to do that scoop inside. Got a little athletic with it. Ch blocked by Cho Song Wah, but yet again, I'm not, I don't think anyone's going to cry over that one. Cho Song Wah in the woods. Not where the Foo Dog should be. Get him inside. Frola, pass. Kasanishi hits the shot from 22. Yeah, toes right on the line there. That was so close to being a three. That's exactly what you want her to do, though. Tennessee calls a timeout, and I'm probably... It's probably just for drinks at this point. <laughs> yeah, light refreshment to yeah. say, Hey, guys, you know, just having fun out there. No, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I were coach, I'd just say hello. So, uh, after the game, you want a margarita? You want a martini? Okay, you want... Yes. Taking drink orders, man. It's like... You know, speaking of drink orders, I have to say um, um, a, a story I recently heard here after an interview after the first game, uh, after the first Tennessee win that was delightful. Um, of course, FBA players love to play pranks on each other. Um, Barry Carpenter and uh, Paul Turanura, great friends, long years. Uh, they, uh, I, I understand, on their last road game of the season, um, just uh, on the morning of the match, um, uh, what happens, but uh, Paul Terranuro wakes up 5 a.m. in the morning of somebody knocking on his door, and it turns out that uh, giant, just, just trays and trays of breakfast. Just, just all kinds of trays, like, here's your order, sir, and they just have this, just, just, just everything. Salmon and pancakes and omelets and everything. And it turned ah. out that Barry Carpenter had filled out the, uh, uh, the card and had them, like, order everything for 5 a.m. delivery. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, yeah. Hopefully he at least enjoyed his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, PT's a big guy. Maybe I'm sure he could put away a lot, but uh, I'm sure that that had to be a little bit like, oh, come on. I just got to sleep. Yeah, if it was Zach Tate and they would probably like, oh, OK, uh, <laughs> when's, when's brunch? <laughs> <laughs> good thinking. That's a good point. If somebody tried to pull that trick on him, wouldn't go very far. <laughs> And now doing this, we've we've had uh, Jamie Velasquez just nail an absolutely gorgeous 21-foot shot. The uh, uh, Totems took it down to the other end, lost it, just absolutely lost it. We're running back, and now we've got Butler back at the uh, three-point line. Um, or not three-point, they're at the charity oh, Excuse me, it's Monogoyak. Monogoyak, yeah, Monogoyak. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> going for his second free throw. Gets them both, and uh, all right, we're two points away from that potential 30-point lead for Tennessee. Edmonton 67, Tennessee 95. We're down to the last seven minutes of the game. Oh, boy. Tough pass there. Fiora able to scoop it in. He, she hits, shoots it from 22, but no good. Monogoyak's got it, and now the Moonshiners could get a 30-point game. Parker from three. She hits it. They've gone up by 31. That was... A huge pass right to Barker. He was ready for it. Just took it. All right, that that's just that. I gotta admit, that's a little inexcusable. I mean, right now Tennessee should just be burning the clock, and instead they go for the quick points. Yes, Holly Barker was wide open. Yes, she was lined up for that third, and yes, that's her shot. But come on, that's not necessary. Yeah, but when you know you can take a shot, you just do. Just like Romana in right there, simple left hand hook right up. Well, that was a, definitely a mismatch there, uh, guarded by Monogoyak. I mean, Monogoyak usually a very reliable defender, but, I mean, come on. The Romanoran's a pretty big lion. That he is, especially when you're my size. <laughs> <laughs> and over to Ra Random. Random is just kind of wandering in the woods there, kind of what I would be doing. Got the clock burning down. Uh, and you know what? Uh, you, you didn't even need to make the shot, but yet Jeff Random decides, ah, I'll make it anyway. Tennessee gets 100 gonna, points. I wonder if they're going to try for a 40-point game. Oh, don't say it. W would that be a finals you know, oh, record? Would a that rec be a first? That could be. That could be a finals record if it was a of any finals match. That's a good thought. It wouldn't be an FBA record, but woo, that, that is possible. I mean, this is just amazing. Edmonton should not be playing this poorly. I have no idea what's going on with this team. And 
I mean, you can bet that after this game, there is going to be some reflection and some figuring out what do we do to turn this around. I mean, thankfully, it's uh, this, uh, the uh, series is going back to Alberta after this one, and they need that. Because, man, I mean, last uh, the last win in this series, I mean, Tennessee certainly did a fine job stealing things away after uh, giving up the lead in the, the first half. But, uh, but, boy, in this game, they are just taking off. Mondegaik puts it up, not quite in and out, recovered by Romanorin. Now we've got, uh, let's see, who we got? Oh, Decent back to Romanorin. Romanorin, <laughs> pump faking from the charity stripe for some reason. Uh, don't, what are you guys doing? I think, I, I think they've mistaken themselves for the Moonshiners and are just burning clock. Fiora finally gets a good, a, a decent look, fading away to the side, uh, but not able to connect. Recovered by the Moonshiners, going the other way. Barker. Handing off to Random. Random kicks it out. Butler from three! No mackerel this time. Romanorin's right there to get it back and off to Teeson. Raccoon in the woods. Probably wishing he was in some real ones right now. No good with that shot, but it's recovered by, by his buddy Marco Sly. Marco Sly did a beautiful job with a spin move down low, trying to hook it back over his ears, but not able to connect, but he was able to draw a foul, and that will put the big Raccoon at the line for two. Marco Sly out of Underwood College. He's been playing since 2005. Solid player for the Tap Roots, who had a almost were in these finals. But the Moonshiners able to beat them in six in the Eastern Conference Championship Series. That was a heck of a series too. I I, I really thought the Tap Roots would uh, have another shot at the. Uh, the Healy Davis after uh, they had done so well in the regular season. Yeah, I was I was actually really looking forward to it, you know, Taproot's, you know, finals, but the Moonshiners are showing now just why they're here. No doubt. Well, they certainly are owning the still right now. I'll bet you they've got the uh, Copper Pots fresh with a fresh batch of beer because they're going to be making a lot of sales after this game. No good with that one. He's kind of danced around the iron before rolling away. Recovered by Romanorin. Sanford with it. Hand off. Fiora from 20. Then she hits it. Renee Fiora keeping it fluffy. Or as fluffy as she can be. I can see her tails kind of tucked in between her legs right now. 25 point game. Edmonton 75. Tennessee 100. It's been a while since Tennessee has scored. You know, they, they just don't need to at this point, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Not that that's a problem or anything. Well, as soon as I said, I guess, Jeff Random using those dog ears to hear me, I guess. And the pit bull, beautiful turnaround move down low after the spin, able to make the bucket. And that makes Tennessee, gives them 102. Kick out, Kazuniji able to make the tough pass. Excuse me, collects the tough pass. Fiora hits another 20-footer. Beautiful job by the Malamute to keep it fluffy, or as fluffy as you can. You know, Fiora sent that one out to Romanorin and then back to herself. She set herself up for her own shot. No, it was a beautiful play. You're absolutely right. Hitting one side of the court, passing it, then using the give and go to prepare herself on the other side. And the Malamute out of Madison, Wisconsin, able to make that shot. A beautiful job by her. And it's answered by a lovely assist, Wallace Butler, Getting it over to Jeff Random, wide open from 22, and he's able to sink the shot. Pushes Tennessee out to 105, Edmonton 77. Yeah, I think that Moonshine is definitely going for that 30-point victory on this one. <sighs> you know, there's something kind of ironic about the fact that I opened up this game with Scott Polachek, and um, and look, we're having a, a boring ending to it. Well, well you know, to be, to be fair, I don't think he understands he's boring. <laughs> uh, I you did have, actually you had, have, to, have you, I imagine you've, pro, you've faced him up in several games there in the West but uh, have you had a chance to uh, work with Scott before um, I haven't worked with him but I did uh, make the mistake of interviewing him once and that was an incredibly long three minutes <laughs> <laughs> this is as far as you got huh yeah um, I remember when he was uh, in the draft pool and uh, at the time, Jackson Price was looking at him because he's like, oh, six foot ten Fisher. Hmm, that seems really familiar. I'm one of those. I could make him the next one of me. And uh, yeah, um, 
we very wisely talked him out of there. <laughs> Wallace Butler with a rebound going the other way after the missed shot from Kazunishi. Holly Barker finds Eve Pasias down low and get another basket for Eve Pasias. She is showing her scaly hands to the crowd. Moonshiners are like, eh, there's a point. We'll take that one. Why not? It's a 30-point <laughs> match as we enter the last minute of this game. Edmonton 77, Tennessee 107. Fiora from three. No fluff this time, but it's recovered by Marco Sly. And the raccoon, oh, terrible <laughs> pass. His pass ball hit the underside of the glass and rolled and snapped right into Moonshiner paws. Yeah, Travis Bach is like, oh, yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <sighs> Pass inside, finds Barker at the top of the key. Holly dribbling back and forth, guarded by the fluff. Still holding on to it, makes the tough call play, and oh, the one dog gets a foul on the other. Renee Fiora finally picks up her first personal in this match as the boxer take, goes to the line for two. Currently 30-point match. Let's see if we can bring it up to 32. <laughs> Some people say it's unsportsmanlike to run up the score, but at the same time, if you're home and your fans are there, they expect you to keep on playing like you've been playing. They don't want to see you slack off. That's a good point. That actually is a good point. Barker misses the first. Not that I think she's too upset about it. And both teams are putting in the scrubs. Murky coming back onto the floor. I'm simply just stunned we didn't see Rocky Caracol at all this quarter. You're absolutely right. Rocky sat down for the entire, uh, nearly the entire second half. He had a great start there at this open up the third, but yeah, once things just got bad, they're, just gonna, they're gonna protect their MVP and just save them for Edmonton. 20 seconds left, we got a 31 point game. One second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Totems with a chance to at least make it uh, less than a, th yeah, let's, uh, trim it down to, I was, you can't say trim it down to single digits, um, sink it down to the next 10. And they've just completely wasted their time. Hey, uh, but finally. a beautiful shot there oh. from Sanford Thiessen, 0.4 seconds left, so that'll be the last bucket of the game, at least the, uh, uh, the totems were able to end it with a, uh, beautiful bucket and make it, um, a 29-point match. Edmonton Totems will end 79. The Moonshiners 108, and the Moonshiners go up two to nothing in this series.